This is the story of the 1st Infantry Division, the Red One, whose fighting men saw the war through from D-Day, North Africa, to VE Day, Germany. Those combat boots, polished now for occupation duty, slogged through eight campaigns and three amphibious landings. But units of the 1st fought as far back as the Revolution to preserve the Union in the Civil War. Were first in combat in World War I, when those units were combined into a regular Army division. Then in 41, there came from all walks of life a new generation of recruits. Boy, do I remember breaking in them first GI shoes. We learned quick it was a fighting outfit from that rugged training we got here and overseas. Still, when we left England along in 42, we felt pretty good. Had a swell CG, Terry Allen, a fighting general. We liked him, and he liked us. So the outfit relaxed, had some fun. Till, on a chilly November dawn, to the coast of North Africa out there in the dark, we knew action was close. Everyone tightened up, waiting. I don't know which was colder, the water or the feeling in my stomach when they opened up on it. In three days, Oran was ours. Easy. Too easy. We thought we knew what war was like. But Jerry taught us different. With dive bombers, tanks, those dirty 88s. A tough school, pal. The kind you gotta work your way through. Damn near flunked out at the casserine. But we learned the score, started to teach Jerry a few things out of our book. We ran our way back to Gafsa and down Ronald's throat at El Guitar, where we tore up his crack tent panzer division. Then we swung north to Matur. artillery, hidden mines, walls of machine gun fire. Meanwhile, Montgomery's 8th Army cracked the Merritt line. When we shook hands with his patrols, it was over the corpse of Rommel's army. After Tunisia, the crazy rumor got around that we were going to load on boats for home. <laughs> we loaded on boats all right, but for Sicily, which, believe me, was no place like home. This time, the beachhead was plenty rough. But after we broke through, the Red One moved fast. It took 18 pounds in 37 days. But to take it, we had to stop and slug it out in the mountains all along the way. Like China. Pretty mountain town. But after 21, yeah, 21, Jerry counterattacks, it looked like this. We won all right, but we paid. After Troina, they sent us back to England. Our new CG, General Hubner, put us through the jumps again. We practiced for another beachhead, but this one we knew was going to be the payoff. The biggest show of all. The curtain went up on June 6, 1944. You know, I never think of Omaha as a big town in Nebraska, not anymore. To me, it's a piece of beach in Normandy that was hell. We were getting crowd artillery, mortar, and machine gun fire like rain, without even an umbrella for protection. We came close to being rained out all right. 
But when Colonel Taylor of the 16th yelled, get the hell off the beach, we got the hell off and ran smack into hedgerow country where the crowd set up the fields like forts, using the hedgerows for walls. Like a Chinese puzzle out of hell, we clean up one field only to find out the next was loaded with Jerry. Had to keep digging all the time for cover, maybe eights and mortars, because if you didn't. Still in a week's time, we dug, shot, and plowed our way to Kalma, where we waited for the other outfits to come up on our flanks. The French were tickled to see the supermen getting licked by plain American dopey, who were human beings, too. We got a chance to clean up and tell the folks back home how we were doing. It had to be a short note, though, because a big blow-up was brewing. It came on July 25th, when it seemed the whole damn Air Corps got in on a big bust around some low. the infantry pulled an off-tackle play west of the town. The 4th and 9th divisions opened up a nice big hole, and the 1st charged through. Patton's tanks went running all over like frisky colts, chopping up the panicky crops. But it was the Doeford who did the cleaning up. Combat engineers dug up mines like fat cabbages, cleared away roadblocks. And all the time, the infantry kept coming along for the final kill. It was slugging and slogging, shoot and march, grab a nap when you could, eat while you hiked, sea rations, K's, and a lot of dust. That's what the school books call victorious pursuit, eating dust. Even when they put you on trucks, you ate dust. It was a hell of a way to see La Belle France, but we sure covered ground. From Coutances in a month, we drove a right away clear across France. Through Soissons, where the Red One smeared Jerry 26 years ago. We rolled across the Belgian border. Bagged 17,000 Heinies and a three-day strap around Mont and kept scooping them up all the way to the Siegfried line. We cracked it in three days, drove a claim into Hitler's backyard around Aachen. It looked like the final round was coming up. We did some preparing. Hitler decided to hold out in Aachen tap up the Germans by making it a symbol of Nazi resistance. But we hadn't seen the worst yet. Hurtgen Forrest showed us that. Yeah, Hurtgen really trimmed down the outfit. But we cleaned out Jerry. Then General Andrus, our new CG, pulled us out for our first rest in six months. We couldn't believe it. Even when we got back to Verveer in Belgium, we knew it was too good to last. Well, it didn't. Hitler shot the works with one last gamble in the Ardennes. Jerry beating his brains out attacking. Then us counterattacking. And brother, were we tired. You know, they call the infantry the queen of battle. Don't ask me why. You wouldn't say those guys look pretty, would you? No, not pretty. But they're real men. Soldiers. Who do their job.